So average acceleration That's A average, AV. Again, a lot of times you'll see us write that A with the line over. That means average acceleration. It is acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over the change in time. How fast your velocity is changing. So it's final velocity, V final, minus V initial, I or O, it doesn't really matter divided by t final minus t initial. Since your initial time is always zero, so I always write average velocity is equal to v final minus v initial divided by time. How long it took? The change in velocity divided by time. Now, I'm gonna clean this just a little bit. Remember I said there's four physics equation? We wrote one of them already. Where's that one? X final equals what? X initial plus V average times time. Let me take a clean sheet of paper, yellow one, small one, and write them on it. One we wrote is what? X final equals X initial plus V average times time. I'm going to write the second one right there from this one. If you multiply both sides by T, what are you going to have? V final minus V initial, right? Mm -hmm. And if I solve it for V final, I will need to do what? Add V initial to both sides. So I end up with V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. And that's my second equation. Since we're dealing with only constant acceleration, all of physics one, we're going to deal with constant acceleration. So if the acceleration is constant, then the average and the acceleration will be the same. So that equation really becomes V final equals V initial plus A times T. Again, the reason we're dealing with constant acceleration. So you don't have to write average acceleration. Now, we know gravity on Earth, that's acceleration, which is what? 9.8 meters per second squared. Now again, if you look at the units, it's down. If you look at the units for acceleration, what is the unit for velocity, if you think about it? Is in velocity meters per second? And what about the units for time? Isn't that second? What is meters per second divided by second? It's meters per second squared. So the acceleration has a unit of meters per second squared. Now just some numbers about acceleration. If you ever flown on a plane, commercial plane, so takeoff acceleration for a plane is roughly five meters per second squared. When you're in elevator going up or down, The acceleration for an elevator roughly three meters per second squared. These are just some common numbers. Elevator. Any of you crazy people do bungee jumping? Bungee, bungee jump there.
that acceleration is roughly 30 meters per second squared. bullet from a gun, from a rifle. Shouldn't be talking about guns here. From rifle has an acceleration. Ready for that number? Four, four, zero, 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 zero. Yep. Baseball. When somebody hits a home run, Mookie Betts or J.D. Martinez. The acceleration for baseball, batted baseball. It's 3,000 meters per second squared. I mean 30,000, not 3,000, so 30,000. Yep. So gravity is about 10, 9.81. Elevator is much less than that. Take off in a plane a little bit less than 5. But when you start to get some numbers, it could be a high, high number. So the reason I'm throwing these numbers at you, so as you're doing a problem, don't be surprised if your acceleration is really high. Look at that number, 440,000 meters per second squared. When that bullet leaves that nozzle of that barrel there, it's traveling like high, high speed. It goes from not moving to a massive speed in the 700. So it has to be a large acceleration to push it to go that far, you know. If you watch a baseball, when a batter hit the baseball, the baseball actually eventually stops. So you see the ball comes in, this is my tennis ball, it comes in handy, I told you. The ball comes in, it hits the bat, it bends a little bit, starts, then stops going that direction, then it has to go this way. So at one point you have a zero acceleration. We're talking about like one tenth of a second or even less than that. So suddenly you're going from that to 150, 115 miles per hour when you hit a home run. So to go from zero to 115 miles per hour in one tenth of a second, it has to be large acceleration to get it to do that. That's why you see the acceleration for a baseball, 30,000. Because that contact time, way less than one tenth of a second. You know? Comes in, it hits the bat, and it's gone. It bends a little bit, the same thing with golf. You watch them on slow motion, I love when they show the slow motion. You see that club goes, bend like this, then the ball goes flying. That contact time, it's called an impulse, it's a short, short time. Again, around the one thousandth of a second. And to go from not moving to moving now at 75, 80, 90, 95 miles per hour, you have to have a large acceleration to get the acceleration, how fast the velocity is changing in zero time. So if you can change, the, just think of that number. If something is coming at you, let's say something is not moving, suddenly it's moving at five miles per hour, five, in 0 0.01 second. 0 0.01. That's an acceleration of 500. 5 divided by 0 0.01. So when a golfer hits that ball there, oh, there's a picture somebody drew for me. So when Tiger Woods, everyone knows Tiger Woods, even if you don't follow golf there, hits that ball, the ball is not moving. Here's the ball. Initial velocity of the ball is zero. Tiger hits it now, and it's moving with initial velocity, or final velocity after he hits it short quickly, let's say 15 meters per second. About 45 miles per hour. We're not talking about massive speed. Less than 45 times 2.24. So what's 15 times 2.24? 
Yep. So at 34 mi miles per hour, we're not talking again, but the time of impact, if the time is very short, like 0 0.01 second, one hundredth of a second, the club makes contact with the ball there, then your acceleration is going to be what? The change in velocity over change in time. So that's 15 meters per second minus zero divided by 0 0.01. That's 1,500 meters per second squared. Now we know when Tiger hits that ball, it's not going 33 miles per hour. It's going 80 miles per hour probably, 90 miles per hour. That's why the acceleration for a baseball or a, you know, um, a golf player, you're talking about three, 4,000. Or you watch the spaceship when it takes off. It has an acceleration of roughly 20 meters per second squared. Twice gravity. Is going, you see it going, then as I start to pick up speed, it's moving much faster than the acceleration. But initially at takeoff, the reason it's going slow, you got millions and millions of gallons of fuel you gotta burn. You know how much gasoline weighs? Anyone? Six pounds per gallon, every gallon. Six pounds. There's a million gallon on the right side and that booster, a million on the left side plus whatever the actual ship carries, because there's all these engines on it. But the booster rack has one million gallon on this side, one million on that side. And you're gonna burn that in the next 10 minutes. One million times six million pounds. From here, six million, there's 12 million pounds of extra weight. That's gonna disappear in just a matter of 10 minutes. And then they drop to earth, empty. So slowly it's going, to, 20, like 2G basically, 20 meters per second squared. Gravity is roughly 10, it's not 10, 9.8, but if you use 10, if you go in 20, that's 2G. So you see the astronauts sitting there, the old picture, they like, they shake and all that stuff. They can't really get up because there's a lot of pressure on you. 2G, you might not see them a lot, but if somebody puts 2G on you, you'll feel there's like having somebody laying on your chest weighing as much as you do. That's what 2G. Just take the same person your weight and have them lay on top of you and you're trying to get up. And as it goes faster and faster, you got three, four, five G. Air Force pilots, when they take somebody for a spin, when they're, they're always gonna try to make you throw up in that plane. Why? They try to get about nine, 10 Gs on you. Once they hit eight G, all of us will pass out, except them, they train in it. They wear that suit that stops the blood from going, leaving the body, you know. That's why they don't pass out. But the average person sitting there, ah, everything comes out, you know. <laughs> I fly a single engine plane. When I turn a 45 degree angle, I have a 3G on me. I can feel the blood rush into my head. I can tell you, you get dizzy, within seconds you feel that blood, and it's just a short turn, and the plane sinks. The plane will just go down because now I don't have enough force to keep it up there. A 45 degree, I have a 3G on me, three times gravity, and it doesn't feel good. But that's where the acceleration is, change in velocity over change in time. So that equation now, we write that V final equals V initial plus AT. That's one of our four equations we will be using. Gravity on the moon, by the way, is almost one-sixth gravity on Earth. Gravity on Earth, G on Earth is what, 9.81? meters per second squared. If on the moon, gravity is 1.62. So boy, I can lose a lot of weight if they just send me to the moon. <laughs> it's mass times gravity, that's what your weight is. So my weight is mass times gravity. Your mass in kilogram. I'm roughly 95 kilogram, so 95 times 9.8, that's how much I weigh on Earth in Newton, not my weight. Weight is a force. 
It's 932 roughly. You take me to the moon, I'm going to weigh what? My mass doesn't change. I'm going to be roughly one-sixth of that number. One hundred and fifty-three, one hundred and fifty-four Newton. I bet you if you divide the one point six two by nine point eight, you'll see it's roughly one six. One point six two divided by nine point eight one. Notice point one six. Or if you reverse them, nine point eight one divided by one point six two. Notice it's six. That's why we tell people. On the moon, you weigh one six actually where you weigh on Earth. Because the gravity on the moon is roughly one six the gravity on Earth. Again, we're dealing with constant acceleration, so instantaneous acceleration, constant acceleration are the same thing. If you have a picture, of velocity versus time, then the slope of that is your acceleration. So if I give you a picture, I said, you know, this is my velocity. This is velocity on the y-axis. And this is time on this x-axis. What is the acceleration? Take, take two points on that line and find the slope of that. So let's say this is one second here, for example. And this is four seconds here. This is a velocity of six here. This is a velocity of nine. What's my acceleration? My acceleration is equal to the slope. That's my average acceleration. And my slope is what? The change in velocity over the change in time. Let's look at my velocity. It went from 6 to 9. It changed by how much? 3 units. And the time changed by how much? 3 units. So my average acceleration for this is equal to what? 1 meter per second squared. So the slope of the velocity graph there, velocity versus time, is your acceleration. Is it the rise over the run again? Rise over the run, yes. And your rise has to be the velocity. On this axis has to be the velocity. And on this line you have to have the time because the rise has to be the velocity. You want the velocity to be on the top. You want the time to be on the bottom. Can the acceleration be positive and negative? Yes. How can the acceleration be negative? Think about this. Where? Take six flag. When you come in, when you're at the end of your run, coming from six flag, as you're on that cart moving now, Moving a velocity, initial velocity, because you move an initial velocity, let's say, I don't know, uh, 10 meters per second. And now you're going to stop. Right? And let's say it took time wise four seconds for that to happen. So what's your acceleration? It's V final minus V initial divided by the time. What's my V final? Zero. What's my V initial? 10 divided by four, it's negative 2.5 meters per second. You're slowing down instead of picking speed. Anytime you're slowing down, like when you drive in your car, you have the cruise control set up, suddenly the person in front of you is going slow, what do you do? You hit the brakes and what happens to your car? Slows down, that's a negative acceleration. Anytime you slow down, you have a negative acceleration. Anytime you pick up speed, you have what? 
positive acceleration. If you go on a constant speed, what is your acceleration? Zero. Zero. Why? Because V final minus V initial will be the same number. So here's another example. I'm going to give you a picture. Tell me what the acceleration. I'll try to draw it nice and neat, a little bit nice and neat since I got a ruler here now. This is the velocity on the x-axis, on the y-axis. This is time here. Velocity here. And time here. I'll give you some numbers in a minute. I don't know, I'll just put some numbers like this. Let's see, this number here, I'll just throw some numbers up. Uh, this is 3.5 meters per second. This one here is one meter per second. This time here is two seconds. This is five seconds. And this one here is two. And this value down here is seven. I'm gonna label these as A, B, and C. Oh, I well, I'll use capital A. What is the acceleration at A? What is the acceleration at B equal to? And what is the acceleration at C equal to? So we go on like this. As time increases, here we go. So look at A. It's V final minus V initial divided by time. So what is my V final for A? This, this A right there, that piece. One minus, what's my initial? 3.5, I'm assuming the 3, 4, and 5 was a zero actually, or this is the zero mark here. And what's my time? Two seconds. Negative 2.5 divided by two, which is what? Negative 1.25 meters per second squared. At B, V final again, minus V initial divided by time. My time is three seconds. What's my V final? One. What's my V initial? One. What is my acceleration? Zero. That means I was moving at constant speed. This one I was slowing down. You can see the velocity dropped. That's why my acceleration is negative. What about that one? It's V final minus V initial divided by time. My V final, what's my final velocity here? Two, what's my initial velocity? One divided by what? Seven minus five, which is what? Two seconds. Change in time. One half. So that's positive 0.5 meters per second squared. Positive means I was picking up speed. So when the acceleration is positive, I'm actually 
speed increases. So when you have positive acceleration, that means the speed increases. When you have negative acceleration, that means what? Speed decreases. When you have zero acceleration, what does that mean? Constant speed. So you can have positive speed, negative speed, constant speed. I mean positive acceleration, negative acceleration, constant speed, zero acceleration. I think that's...